Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, on his country's national day. His Majesty the King extended his wishes of good health and happiness to the Emir and further progress and prosperity to the people of Kuwait under his wise leadership. His Majesty the King praised the deep rooted relations between the two countries and people and their progress across all fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah on the occasion of Kuwait's National Day. His Royal Highness wished His Highness continued good health and Kuwait greater prosperity. His Royal Highness also sent similar cables to the Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah and to the Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser received a book that documents the civilizational gains and development achievements at Rafah and narrates the historical stages that Rafah has witnessed. He affirmed the importance of Bahrain's historical heritage and its civilizational and development march during the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and with the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salma bin Hamad Al Khalifa in establishing the status of the kingdom as a land of civilizations. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed the efforts of the book creators and the history and documents of Rafah city which reflects its heritage and prominence and its role in the development of the kingdom. He also commended the efforts of the southern governor in introducing various initiatives on establishing the values of Rafah's history. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his efforts in achieving the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the committee's meeting remotely. His Highness extended gratitude to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for their continued support of equestrian sports in the kingdom, which has developed the sports and enhanced Bahrain's leading position in hosting and organizing equestrian events. His Highness noted the importance of implementing strategies and programs to further enhance equestrian sports within the kingdom, attracting regional and international recognitions. He reviewed topics on the meeting's agenda involving mechanism and programs to further develop the REHC's activities as well as using the latest technologies. The meeting further provided an opportunity to explore a number of proposals regarding the organization of international equestrian championships in the coming year and international participation regulations, in particular given the success of the first two editions of Bahrain International Trophy. His Highness further reviewed and approved the REHC's general strategy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, received the Director General and Chief Executive of the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. John Chipman, in the presence of the Executive Director of the IISS Middle East, Sir Tom Beckett, and the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Rana bin Isa bin Daij Al Khalifa. The Minister welcomed Dr. Chipman and praised the tangible efforts undertaken by IISS in the field of conducting research and studies and organizing forums, including the Manama Dialogue, which has gained wide international attention. He also affirmed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs' constant keenness on enhancing bilateral cooperation and coordination between the two sides in order to achieve the desired common goals, wishing Dr. Chipman and all those in charge of the Institute further success. Dr. Chipman valued the Ministry of Foreign Affairs' continued support to IISS, expressing pride and appreciation for the effective contributions made, including the Manama Dialogue, which highlighted constructive bilateral cooperation between the two sides and became a global platform for politicians, experts, and specialists to exchange visions and ideas. He wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity. Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and Chief Executive of the Supreme Council for Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dayna, participated in the fifth session of the UN Environment Assembly, held virtually under the theme Strengthening Actions for Nature to Achieve Sustainable Development Goals. The theme calls for a strengthened action to protect and restore nature and the nature-based solutions to achieve the SDGs in its three complementary dimensions, social, economic, and environmental. Dr. Bin Dayna said that Bahrain was confirmed as the Vice President of the United Nations 
Environment Assembly. He stressed that Bahrain has launched three environmental initiatives, the National Air Quality Strategy, the Assessment of Sustainable Consumption and Production, and the Adaptation of Climate Change, especially the rise in the sea level, which is an important issue for the kingdom as it is committed to dealing with it as an island nation. The Bahraini Legislative Authority organized a virtual seminar on the emergency legislation to reduce the repercussions of the coronavirus crisis on SMEs. As part of the 14th meeting of the speakers of the GCC, Shura Councils, Councils of Representatives and the National Assembly, which is chaired by the Council of Representatives Speaker Fazia Zena. The seminar aims to exchange expertise and knowledge between Gulf Councils and the legislative, supervisory, financial and diplomatic fields to limit the repercussions of COVID-19 pandemic on SMEs. A number of officials in the General Secretariat of the Gulf Legislative Councils, representatives from the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and officials from the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism of Bahrain participated in the seminar. The Kingdom of Bahrain takes pride in its friendly and outstanding relations with countries around the world based on mutual respect and interest. In a recently published interview, the Japanese ambassador to Bahrain, His Excellency Hayde Keito, reflected his country's keenness to further bolstering relations with Bahrain in all fields. For more on this, we are joined on the phone by the Japanese ambassador to Bahrain, His Excellency Mr. Hayde Keito. Hello, Your Excellency. The Kingdom of Bahrain and Japan enjoy excellent relations in various fields. Can you tell us more about that? Well, thank you for having me with you today. Although we were unable to celebrate it with Bahraini guests and friends because of the coronavirus pandemic, we had the 61st birthday of His Majesty the Emperor, Japan's National Day, yesterday. I would like to thank Bahraini people for their goodwill towards Japan. I only say that the bilateral relations between Japan and Bahrain started in 1934, when the first oil export abroad from Bahrain went to Japan. In recent years, there was an exchange of visits at the highest level. In 2012, His Majesty King Hamad visited Japan. In the following year, 2013, Japanese Prime Minister, His Excellency Mr. Abe, visited, Japan, uh, visited Bahrain. And in 2019, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Salman visited Japan to take part in the enthronement ceremony of the new Japanese Emperor. The overall trade volume between Japan and Bahrain was steady at around 1 billion US dollars. But in 2018 and 19, the exports from Bahrain to Japan increased, and the total trade volume was around $2 billion. In the field of regional security, Japanese Maritime Service Defense Force is participating in the counter-piracy operations whose headquarters is located in Bahrain. I am also trying to offer the people in Bahrain as many occasions as possible to appreciate the Japanese culture with the general support of the Bahrain sponsors. As ambassador, I would like to see the existing excellent relations between Japan and Bahrain further strengthened in all fields. And what are the ongoing efforts to further bolster cooperation in the economic and financial sectors? The Japanese companies for many years have contributed to infrastructure construction of Bahrain in such important fields as oil, gas, aluminum, and water. I am happy as Japanese ambassador to hear a good reputation of those facilities constructed by Japanese companies. I hope that Japanese companies can present competitive offers and contribute to the future projects as well, such as a BAPCO-related project in Bahrain Metro. Another possible field of cooperation is the financial sector. Bahrain has strong expertise in Islamic banking and more recently in fintech. I believe that Japan can learn a lot on fintech sector from Bahrain. Japanese Ambassador to Bahrain, Mr. Haide Keito, arigato gozaimasu. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 3,203 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 281,425. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,078 with 864 recoveries, 675 registered new cases and three deaths. 
243 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 422 are contacts of active cases, and 10 are travel-related. The deceased were two male citizens aged 77 and 73, and a female citizen aged 77. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.